Hello awesome people. I hope you're having a great day today. Today I'm taking a look at the short story The Bleak Shore. Uh, it was published in this Ilmet and Langmar collection by Fritz Lieber that we've been doing a deep dive into for you folks uh, as a reminder. Uh, so it's been fun. Uh, I knocked it out last night in about 25 minutes or so uh, for this a second time and then I think it was, it was pretty quick. I def definitely enjoyed it. Uh, it's an interesting short story because it sets up the next short story in this collection. Whereas most of these short stories are published individually and then put into this collection. Uh, the first of these short stories in the Fafford and Grey Mouser series was published in 1939 by Fritz Lieber. It was his first story uh, that he ever published. And then he died in 92 uh, and he published in every decade actually from the 30s to the 90s. Which is a key reason why uh, I care about going back and knocking out this and reviewing it for this channel, uh, because the channel's name, The Worst Thing About New Books, is a quote from a French philosopher named Jacques Schubert, who said that the worst thing about them was that they kept us from reading the old books. And so these, the guy who published from the 30s to the 90s, and that's when he and when he died, uh, is definitely something that is a passion for this project, right? And definitely where it comes from. So knocking out some of these short stories is definitely a key part of that. I had reviewed five short stories in, in this series. Uh, that's multi book longs in, in all these collections of all these books that were published. And I, uh, I had knocked out five a few years ago, back in the first couple of years of this channel. That was before uh, I was going back and rereading things that I had read previously, um, or, or just things that I that are doing reviews that were new new to me that I just read. Uh, so I had stopped that about three year, three or four years ago. Uh, now I go back and reread these, and so I haven't gone back and read, uh, done any more reviews of his. I have reviewed a short story of his in the science fiction genre, that's in the Hall of Fame, and then I also knocked out a. Um, a horror short story in the Cthulhu mythos. He was actually a, a protege of Lovecraft, who died in 37 before he published his first short story uh, as an editor and a friend. Uh, so he was definitely somebody. So him publishing uh, an honorarium in the Cthulhu mythos makes perfect sense later on after his stuff was done. Uh, he's one of the most awarded authors out there, period. Uh, his stuff has won a lot of Hugos uh, in the science fiction genre. This series actually has won some Hugos too. And he's also won some Stoker uh, in the uh, in the uh, horror genre. So he's one of the most awarded guys out there in these three genres. So let's take a look at what I thought about The Bleak Shore. Now this, uh, as a reminder, my reviews are supporter free. Uh, and this is pretty short and it's only like 25 minutes long. So I don't want to spend too much of your time doing a deep dive. But basically we are in a gambling hall. And our two main thieves, uh, Gray Mouser and Fafford, are there gambling. Uh, and they're, they're they come across a guy who starts to be like, uh, I've heard a lot about you guys because you know, their, their reputation is now preceding them, if you will. And he tells them about a bleak shore, a place that they would never be able to survive. Uh, and so that ups their interest. So now, of course, they're going to search out the bleak shore. Now, what winds up happening is, is that one of the members of, the, of, of, one, of their boat that they own, one of the crew, actually they're slaves, uh, there are four of them, one of them has, has come back and he's survived a trip. And so starting about four pages into the short story, he's going to start and become the point of view character. And the person is going to tell us now what happened in this faded voyage to the bleak shore uh, the bleak shore clearly sets up the next short story in this collection again that would be odd for its time because they were typically published not consecutively uh, and had different at times uh, in these thieves lives for example one short story uh, could have had them just meeting whereas another short story might have them you know as old people right and so forth but this collection is published uh, chron chronologically not from publication date but by uh, the, the 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 chronological in their in their career, so it has different levels of craftsmanship in the short stories. For example, I gave the previous one that I reviewed uh, an, an eight minus, but this one I'm only going to give a seven too. It's it's ending, so it's okay, but it's not it's not great. It definitely leaves you wanting, you, you know, uh, and so forth. And it definitely sets up the next short story. Uh, so, so we'll see where it, where it ends up. And it reads more like a chapter than a short story proper. Although it's fine, it's a short story. Um, so, uh, yeah, but there you are. That's The Bleak House by Fritz Lieber. Now, this stuff is heavily influential on modern fantasy. 
for example, this is where the introduction to the Thieves Guild comes from, uh, and so and so what the Thieves Guild does, how they operate, uh, what thieves can actually do physically, um, or things that Fafford and Craig Mouser can do. Uh, so you can definitely see that in the modern take on thieves. Also, the big large city of Lankmar. This is very different uh, than many of the fantasies that were being written pre-Tolkien. Uh, and you can definitely see this giant city of Lankmar, uh, the seedy giant city uh, that dominates the plane that it's on. It's definitely a key part of modern fantasy too. Big giant modern fantasy cities that are big uh, and large and seedy and have thieves, guilds, and, and all these things are definitely something that have taken a page from Lankmar and Fritz Lieber too. In fact, he's actually mentioned by Gary Gygax in his first edition, Dungeon Master's Guide, in an appendix at the end called Appendix M, where he lists his influences and where he came up with his ideas for the game. So this is actually, he actually roll calls Fritz and Liebers in there, and in in this series in particular, in there is a key influence on the game. So it's actually, he actually mentioned that too. So uh, he, he will admit to that. So there you are. I'll go ahead and leave you to it. Have you read Bleak House? If so, I'm sorry, Bleak Shore, not Bleak House. <laughs> if so, what do you think about it? Uh, if so, let's talk about it in, more in the comments below. If you want to talk about the ending, which I don't like, but maybe you do. Uh, if you disagree with me on the 7 out of 10, let's talk about that too. If you enjoyed this, why not hit that subscribe button? There's going to be a lot more of these to follow. And then finally, I want to thank you so much for taking some time out of your day and investing it in watching my video. We all have so many things that are happening in our lives. I were pulled in so many different directions. So the fact that you spent this time with me is incredibly humbling, and I appreciate it. So thanks again, and have an amazing day.